Hi everybody, welcome to this build with me video. And in today's scenario, we're gonna build a simulation for size up and initial strategy and tactics for a Taco Bell restaurant. So most of you probably have a Taco Bell somewhere in your response area or some type of similar fast food restaurant. So again, we're gonna go ahead and jump in. And before we get started with the actual simulation, I want to take just a second to uh, talk about the photos that I took. So I get questions a lot of times about, you know, what I shoot when I go out uh, to these different locations. And I actually uh, took a lot of these photos on a holiday. As you can see, there's no cars in the parking lot. It was nice to be able to uh, get in and take all the photos. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. Uh, if you happen to be on duty or something on a holiday, maybe you can get out and take some pictures and, uh, not have to worry about all the people and cars and things like that. So what we're going to do here, the A side of the building is right over here. That's the actual smaller entrance. It's actually a secondary entrance, I'm sure, for this restaurant, but that's where the road is. So that's the addressed side of the building. The uh, D side over here, I'm sure, is where, you know, most of the traffic comes through. And that is the larger part of the parking lot and then the area leading to the drive through so you can see in this photo, I have a nice wide angle here. I like to leave the roof uh, open. So if we want to put any kind of fire or smoke on the roof, we have plenty of room to do that as well. Now I do have duplicate photos of a lot of the different uh, parts of the building. And uh, again, a little bit of a zoomed in view on that Delta side. And sometimes I do like to get this corner view. As you guys know, if you've watched the videos before, I like straight on shots of the A, B, and C side. But occasionally I do like to shoot from a corner like this uh, just to give a different perspective or to have an extra angle. Now this is the A side, as I said. It's the address side of the building. And uh, again, even though it's less busy of an entrance, it's still going to be our A side. And we'll just scroll through some of these. This is looking from the A side in through the dining room area and then into the back of the restaurant there. And we are going to use this view uh, as part of our scenario today. Now I did have a few other pictures. Again, I didn't delete anything out of here. So this was everything I shot. And I did have a few of these where I wanted to get the inner door, but I ended up with a lot of glare. Uh, so these aren't really going to be used. Now, if I did want to talk about forcible entry here, you know, I could certainly use this photo uh, as part of that. Again, here's a wide angle of the Delta side. And you'll notice I left this one and you'll see in the top left here, that's actually my hand in the photo. A lot of times when you have a high sun, which is uh, this time of day, you, you can uh, put your hand up and kind of block the sun to the lens of the camera. I was shooting with an iPhone here. And you can get some good photos uh, when you have that really bright sun kind of coming right at you. So that's, you'll see some of those. I haven't cropped those out yet, but you can certainly, if you need to use one of those photos, just crop that top section out. And we'll scroll through a few of those. And then here I like to get close-ups of the gas shutoffs and different utilities around the building. So here on the seaside, I was actually... Uh, struggling with the sun to be able to get this view and I ended up having to move over to the towards the BC corner you'll see here I was able to block the sun a little bit so that's a good view and then also when we come over to the opposite side and shoot at that angle I uh, was able to get a, a good view there and then here on the BC corner we have the electric shut off and then I also usually get a zoomed in shot in case I want to do something related to the electric and then this is just my straight B-side shot and a close-up of the window. And then this is another view through the drive-through window. And we're actually going to use this uh, as well for the scenario. We're going to put a fire right here in this wall behind these appliances that they have. And we'll simulate some type of fire that originated back there. So again, these views look pretty good. If you're taking these photos, uh, actually putting the camera directly against the glass um, actually produces really good photos in most cases. You'll see this one because of the bright sun coming from over my shoulder, even putting it up against the glass, I couldn't get rid of those reflections uh, that were in the dining room. So really won't be able to use these photos. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back over to Sims you Share. 
All right, so we're going to start with a new simulation. So we'll start by clicking new. And of course, for this one, we're just going to call it Taco Bell. So keep it real simple. Okay, so remember, you want to start by clicking the hamburger menu, choose set compression, and we want to change our picture compression from 100% here, which is the default, to no compression. Okay, and then we'll click OK, and that will stay with that setting for the remainder of building uh, this scenario. So we're going to go ahead and say use photo from camera roll. And I have an album, like I said, set aside, so we'll grab that, and we'll choose the photo. We're going to just start uh, here with the A side. All right, so this photo is cropped pretty well. We're going to actually leave it just how it is. And I'm not really going to put any fire on the roof. I may at some point add a little bit of fire coming up through uh, like a vent. If there was a, a vent in the kitchen uh, that might be allowing some smoke to come up. But for right now, I'm just going to leave that alone. And from this side, we want to go ahead and just put a little bit of light smoke outside here that's coming up from this door. And so we'll go ahead and start with that. We'll choose new element and we'll go to all smoke and we're just going to use the banking down smoke here. Okay. And we can scale a little bit to get started. And once we scale that down, that's pretty close. Go ahead and grab it. And I want to have it sort of accumulating under that entire canopy there, not just out the door. So that's kind of the look that we're going for there. And so now what I want to do is edit that smoke to make it look a little more realistic. So I'm going to start with the opacity. I'm going to come down just a little because I don't want it super dark. Okay. And then we're going to go to the color and here we can add a little bit more dark. Okay. And then we kind of go back and forth between opacity and the uh, darkness or the color. And then we can also sometimes use brightness as well. Like it can darken that way or we can make it just a little brighter. I like the gray at the end of the smoke sometimes. So now I'm just going to bring the opacity down just a little and we'll call that pretty good right there. And then the last thing I want to do, I don't want it to be totally within this concrete. So I do want to scale just a little, maybe a little too much, drop that down. And I want to try to just kind of fit it so it's just in this general area. So we'll take a look at that. And that's pretty good. You can see a little bit on the brick here. That makes it a little bit more visible uh, when you see it on the brick, sort of in front of the building. Now I do have a little gap here. I just need to move that. So we're going to grab that, move it over and up just a little. That should be pretty good there. All right, good. So I like that. And that's a pretty good start there. So now what we're going to do, since we'll go with this for our A side for right now, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add real quick, you guys know I like to add a little bit of ambiance type smoke here. So I'm actually just going to grab all smoke again, and I'm going to grab our laminar smoke. And I like to just blow this out, not crazy big, but kind of like that. And we're going to change that color, make it a little darker. And I like to go with a darker color, but then I'm going to drop the opacity down. So from here, we just bring it way down. I mean, that's nothing. And you can, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera. But we don't want to darken it to where it blocks out the other smoke. But we definitely want just a little hint like that, maybe a little smoke in the area. And another thing you can do sometimes here is grab this and kind of move it over. And you can see over here to the right, it's a little more clear. Maybe there's not as much smoke or... Just something like that so that it's not just washing out the whole screen. We still have a little clear over here. But you can play around with that as you wish. Okay, so that's our A side. So now we're going to go ahead and move to the B side. So we're going to create a new location. And we'll just call this B. And done. And then I really don't need to copy... Um, Actually, I think I will. I'll, I think I'll copy that uh, banking down smoke that we did. So I'm going to do copy assets from that side, but I'm going to set a different background. So we'll use another photo. And now we want that drive through side of the building, which was pretty much right here. 
and we'll go ahead and create that. Okay, so now we have that side of the building. Uh, we do have a little bit of a shadow here, so if we wanted to, we could crop that out. So we'll do adjust photo, and we're just going to scroll it up just a little. That's pretty good. We got rid of that down there at the bottom, and we're still getting pretty much the whole view here. So we're good there, and we do have this little bit of smoke here. Uh, I'm going to kind of just move this over out of the way to where it's almost off the screen, but I know the lines are still there, so I can still get to it. And I'm gonna grab this smoke, and of course we need to scale this down a little. We'll see how that looks. That's probably gonna be hard to see there, so maybe we flip it the other way. No, I don't like the look of that either, but it could be accumulating a little bit underneath there you know, kind of under this awning. And I do want to drop the opacity a little bit of that. Just want a little hint of some smoke over there. And I'm going to scale just a touch more. And so that's pretty good for that initial just sort of smoke in the area there. That, oops, move that a little. Just gives us that general overall little bit of smoke there. And of course, we do want to grab with our selection rotator this other smoke and bring it back over. This is just that sort of kind of in the area smoke we talked about. Let's take a look. And that's not too bad. I'm really not crazy about this because I think that smoke will be coming more out that window. So I'm actually just going to, this is one of those cases where I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to get rid of it and we're not going to worry about it we'll just go with the general overall smoke in the area uh, if we wanted to we could grab this since it's the only thing there and we could go a little darker just an overall something like that that's pretty good and then we're going to have uh, that other view where they can step up to this window so that'll be actually the next view that we do so for now we're just going to go to a new location and we'll just call this one Uh, DT, actually I'll make it drive through window. And you can always change these. I, I, when I'm building, I like to just make them easy. And then, you know, you can always change them later on. So we're going to go ahead and choose set background from camera roll and go to our album. And from here, we're going to go and grab that inside picture through the uh, drive through window, which is right here. All right, and for this one, we don't really have any inside smoke or fire yet, so we're going to just choose set background with this photo. We're going to leave these blank, hit create. And so now we have this inside. So what I'm thinking here is the fire up the wall, which we're going to use the wall fire, which is maybe one that you don't use as often, but it's actually pretty, pretty cool. Um, it's a neat effect. And then we'll do some banking down smoke and then just some general smoke here towards the bottom. So let's start with the fire. And if you scroll down a little, you have the wall fire here towards the bottom. And I'll just show you what that looks like. You can see it's pretty good, obviously, just fire burning on the wall. Now, if you look at that, we want that to go the other way because we're going to place it right along here. So we want to go ahead and uh, move that. So we're going to choose transform and then horizontal and you can see that turned it around it has it burning the other way so we'll click done and then we need to just scale that a little and we can make that pretty big pretty noticeable there uh, on the floor kind of coming from behind that wall that's pretty good there it's puddled on the floor nicely and we'll just take a look yep, I think that's pretty good I do want to slow it down just a little bit so once I grab it there, maybe drop it to like a 12 or so, something like that. And I did accidentally move that, so I'm going to put it back. Scale just a touch. Okay, that's pretty good. I like that location there. And so now we'll have some banking down. You know, this is putting in a fairly good amount of smoke. So we'll do the banking down smoke here. And of course we want to scale that. 
Now, again, if we're trying to get it all the way across the screen, sometimes, you know, if we scale, we're way too far down to the ground. So I'll show you a little trick here. I like to kind of leave it up there at the top and I'm going to now do the transform narrow and widen. So now you've seen me do this before, but I can widen this out, but I can keep it high up on the ceiling. It's not scaling down into my photo. So I like that. And I'm actually going to come up a little more. I just want to give that illusion of a lot of smoke up here. We're going to go to speed first of all and bring this real slow. It's just kind of a lazy smoke banking down. It's had a lot of time to accumulate in there. And we're going to go to our pass opacity and drop just a little bit, just to where we can barely see some of the roof line right there. And actually I'm going to darken just a little more. Okay. And again, we could put this, if we wanted this to be more involved, we could definitely put fire all across the ceiling. It really just depends on what the scenario is you're going for. Um, on ours, it was during the day, so we're going to say it was seen pretty quickly. And, you know, so our fire isn't too far advanced right now. But another little trick I want to show you, we were talking earlier about we didn't want the smoke banked all the way down, but it's also not realistic that this is totally clear. So what I do here is I kind of layer in another smoke. So we're going to go to smoke and we're going to come over to our gas approach. And this one, we are going to kind of scale out a bit and just kind of drop it down into place. And you may want to go ahead and just shoot it behind your other smoke. We don't want it behind our fire, but we kind of want to put it, you know, to where it's back behind that other smoke. So there it's in front and right there, it's kind of down behind it. So now what we want to do is set our color a little closer to the smoke that's on the ceiling, about like that. And now we want to set our opacity a lot lower. And you see there, we can kind of drop something in like that and you can move that around and get it where you want. But we're ultimately doing kind of a layered smoke that would be pretty realistic for what you would see here. You kind of have your smoke accumulating on the ceiling and then some smoke here. And again, if we wanted to put all this stuff over here on fire, we could certainly do that with our ceiling fire or wall fire. All right, so I think that's pretty good for what I'm going for here. They can see this through that window. And then now they'll be able to see that from the view across the dining room from the A side as well. So we'll duplicate a lot of this and we'll do that A side. Why don't we jump over to that now? So we'll come here to new location. And since we did drive through window here, we're going to put uh, a side window. Okay. And we'll hit done. And on this one, we are going to grab the drive through window assets because we want to bring all that smoke and fire and we want to choose set background. We're going to grab a different photo and this is our view through the dining room from the A side which is going to be right here, I believe. So we'll bring that photo in. All right. And again, we're bringing in those assets. We'll go ahead and create it. And you can see we have a lot uh, kind of going on here, but that's okay. And remember the selection rotator kind of becomes our friend here because we can use that to select the different things we want. So ultimately what I'm looking for is this fire. And since I, now I have that fire selected, I'm going to choose hide other elements. And now we can see a lot better here. What I'm looking to do is put that fire just right here so that it's coming up as if it was, you know, in that area where we just looked at, but I want to mask out this front counter so that the fire looks like, I mean, obviously if I bring it here, that's not realistic. We want to have it behind all of this. So it looks like it's coming up from where that fire was located before. So there's a couple things we want to do here. Um, we want to scale this down a little to start with. And we're really just looking kind of at what this top would look like because all of this is going to be masked out at the bottom. So we'll just kind of put it in right there. I'm actually going to scale it down. There we go. And that's kind of what I'm looking for there. Uh, I'm actually going to do the transform and widen and I'm going to narrow this a little bit because we're really only concerned again at what that top is doing. So I don't need the bottom to be very wide. Okay, that looks pretty good. And again, I'll grab that fire and hide the other elements and we'll just kind of put it where we want it. 
Okay, I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is create a new element, which is gonna be our mask. So we're gonna go utility mask. And once we select the mask, now we can hide other elements. So again, now we can see where we wanna go. We're gonna just drop this in right about here. And we're just looking at that top line right there. We're gonna choose our mask boundaries. And we can bring those over. Kind of line them up where they need to be. Kind of drop them out like that. Now this one, I do want to add one more point right there so that I can put it in about right here and then I can bring this one over. And that still keeps my nice square there. So now let's go ahead and tell the software what ma what we want to mask out. So we choose mask or edit here and then uh, which to mask. And the only thing we want to mask out is the wall fire. So we'll do that and we'll click done and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so that's not bad. We see that kind of burning behind the counter. Uh, one thing I do want to do is I want to move it over to the right a little. I feel like it's a little too close to the left and I want to bring it up just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and grab the fire and we'll come up and over just a little. Take a look at that. Yep, that's pretty good. And that looks like it's going back there. And honestly, the uh, bank down smoke and the other smoke here look like they really don't need any, any changes at all. Uh, I'm really happy with how that looks. So I think we're just going to leave that for now. And we'll go ahead and take a look here in our locations. So we have the A side window and we have the A side, which is our initial, and then we have the B side and the B side window. So really all we need to do is the Charlie and Delta and we're finished. So let's go ahead and create a new location and we'll just do the Charlie side. And we'll grab a photo from our camera roll. And I know that's towards the bottom and I like that one coming from this side. And I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the assets from, well, I'll show you another way to do it. So we're going to go ahead and just create. And now that's this side. Um, if you ever just need one thing from another area, you can actually just go to the area you want. So I'm going to go to the B side. And really all I want is this general haze or smoke here. So I can just grab that and I can hit the hamburger menu and choose copy. And I'm just copying that one effect. And so now if I go back to my new Charlie side that we're doing, I can click the hamburger menu and I can choose paste and we can bring in that effect. So if you don't want to bring all of the effects over from a different side, you can just do one at a time. And a lot of times if I'm making something very identical, I'll go ahead and copy the assets. But if I'm only using one or two elements, a lot of times it's easier to just bring the one or two that you need. So we're going to go ahead and do that and we'll just take a look and on camera. I'm not sure how much you're even going to be able to see here uh, with this, but there is a, a general haze over the screen, which is what we're looking for. All right. And then we're going to go lastly to our Delta side or create our Delta side. So we're going to choose new location and here we're just going to say D side. So now we have the D side, but we want to copy the initial locations assets and we just set the background again to the correct photo here. All right. And then we'll go ahead and create. And then on this one, I do need to move. I need to crop just a little because my hand was there. So we use the hamburger menu adjust background photo and we'll just slightly move that out a little too much right there and that looks great and now we have a little bit of smoke there so we'll grab that and we're going to just scale that down and again we're looking to put that just kind of under that awning as if it was coming out the doors like that we'll take a look 
think that's pretty good. I'm actually going to drop it down a little. I think it's a little high. There we go. That's pretty good. And I think also, if you can tell, it's hard to see here, probably on camera as well, but I am going to do my narrow and widen here and narrow it up a little. I like it being on the bricks a little bit, but I don't want it uh, to be totally, you know, sticking out too far. So, all right, I think that's pretty good. We'll go with that. And we're not going to, I don't think I'm going to go with that smoke up on the roof. I, um, I, I like the idea of having just the ones uh, on the sides there. So, all right, let's just take a quick look. So we have our initial location, which is A, A side window, B, and then the B side window, and then we have C and D. Okay, so now that we're finished with each side of our simulation, we're gonna go ahead and create a walk around. So we're gonna to go to the navigation menu, and we're gonna choose walk around maker. And from here, you see all of our different locations, and we wanna tell the software which ones of those we want included in our control cluster. So we're gonna start by choosing the initial location, which is side A and then side B, C, and D. Now we're gonna go back and do our two windows here uh, in, in a separate step. So in this case, what we wanna do is choose right to left here by default, and we wanna just choose make loop. And you'll see here, once we create the walk around maker, we can click on our different locations and walk around the building. Now we wanna have it where when we click the front arrow here that we can walk up to the window. So now what we want to do is choose back and we want to go back in to set navigation. That's going to allow us to make changes to our navigation that we just created. Now from here at the top of the window, remember we have our B side. So we're looking uh, from the initial location. So my perspective here is going to be if I'm at the A side looking at the front of the building, I want this button here. So I select it to go to A side window. Just like that. I want reciprocal turned on, which is gonna make the down arrow or the back arrow bring us back to the previous view. And so that's all we wanna do there. And we click done. And now we'll just go ahead and do it for the other view as well. So we wanna do set navigation. And you can see that uh, by default, we have set navigation for B side. Again, if it was a different one you needed, you could just search through there, but we're already on the correct one. And when we press the forward arrow, we want it to go to the drive through window. Reciprocal again, turned on, and click Done. And so now if we go back to our initial location and we start from there and we play, you'll see here we have our arrow to go forward. We can look inside the building and we can click to go back. And then again, go to the B side, same thing. Click to look through the window, click here to go back, and then we can continue around the structure in either direction. Okay, so the last thing uh, we can do is sometimes you want to give your members the ability to see that they can click forward to get to something or to look inside. And most times, once they've run these simulations for a while, they kind of know what the arrows will do. But in case we want to, we can uh, also give them a text clue here. So let's go back and we'll choose new element, utility, and we're just going to choose simple text. And we can grab that with our selection rotator and grab the text and we'll click this, delete it, and say, um, click to look inside, something like that. Okay, and we'll go ahead and click done. And then depending on what we want the color to be, uh, we can change the color if we want or just leave it as the red. And so in this case, I'm just gonna grab the text and put it up here and just say click to look inside there. And again, we can, just like before, we can grab that element, copy it. And now we can go over to the B side and we can just paste it. And so now they'll know that they have that same situation there. And I'll show you what that looks like. 
So here they can click to look inside and then they can click back. Okay, and if we're running this in the CTC, then we can just take that element out. All right, so that's gonna complete the simulation. And um, we'll go ahead and do a walk around here. So they come up to the A side. Again, they look inside. They come back out and then we'll go to the B side. Again, they can take a look inside. They can finish their walk around here and go ahead then and make their strategy and tactics from that point. So if you enjoyed this uh, simulation, please give the video a like and share it. And we really appreciate that. It helps us to get the word out. If you are interested in uh, getting this simulation, as always, you can download it in the video description below. So feel free to grab the simulation and use it uh, with your department. And then also, if you're not currently a Sims you Share user, we do have an affiliate link, which is also in the video description. We'd love it if you would purchase through our affiliate link. It helps us to keep making cool videos like this. And one last thing I want to mention, I've had a few people request that I make simulations from buildings in their area. So if you're interested in that, just uh, email me. It's frank at modernfireinstructor.com or leave a comment below and you can send me some pictures and I'll uh, maybe make your scenario on a future video. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.